What's going on guys? So I want to kind of show you guys a little something, kind of just zoom all the way out. What I have is the monthly 20 year chart. Now I've only got about 10 years worth of data that you guys can actually see on the screen here. But one thing that I kind of want to point out, right, is so a lot of people think, you know, stocks can't go lower. Um, you know, this is a generational opportunity of a lifetime to buy. And, and I seen that, you know, being posted all around social media last month and last week and every single day. And it's kind of like, if we really zoom out and kind of look at the bigger picture here and see exactly what's going on, you guys are, are trading or investing through a moment in history. Um, you know, you don't get too many active bear markets uh normally you know an, an average bear market's gonna last anywhere from a couple of months to like you know 12 months right I, I think they got like you know history average from every sort of bear market is sitting right around that 290 to like 435 days or something like that right so we're currently about five months into this active bear market from peak to trough. So, you know, coming off those highs on the triple Qs at around 408, where we got that little bit of a blow off top. And then, you know, pretty much for the past five months, we've been nothing but straight down. Obviously, you're going to get your, you know, your bumps along the road. But one thing that I kind of want to point out to you, if we kind of just go all the way back here and we look at like 2012, right? We've been on an eight to 10 year massive bull run. So if you don't think that stocks can go down lower, you are rudely mistaken. I want you to look, take a look at how small these monthly candles are. These candles almost look like a penny stock, right? So the point that I want to make to you is if every single candle that you're looking at here is representing a month's worth of price action, I want you to look how small and orderly this is. This is an raging bull market okay and look how small these candles are and if you kind of get to the price action of where we've been at recently look how huge these candles are even if you look back to uh you know that 2018 2019 little bit of dip that we had in october and then you look at the you know the short-lived uh kind of spike down on covid before we we ramped up here um you know, even look how small those candlesticks are and look at the kind of candles that we've been having here. This is a very, very aggressive reset. And that's exactly what it is, is it's a reset. A lot of small cap names, a lot of tech growth names never deserved to have the prices that they were given in 2020 off this mega run here that we had. OK, stocks shouldn't have been trading as high as they were trading. This is orderly. This is orderly. This is orderly. This is orderly. This is an easy market to trade. Okay? Easy market to trade. Now, this is where a lot of people got lucky. Okay? A lot of people got lucky during this run-up because pretty much it doesn't matter where you put your money. Every single month we're going higher. Every single month we're going higher. Every single month we're going higher. Very, very easy to make money in that kind of environment especially when the volatility picks up and the candles start to get larger. Look at the body of these candles compared to what an orderly market looks like. You can see there's a lot difference there going on. Now, here's a problem that a lot of traders are going to have when the market does correct itself and it does reset itself is when we go back to an orderly market and we get back into a bull market, you know, people are not going to know how to trade. Uh, just due to the fact that right now Tesla puts in, you know, daily range of 30, 40, 50 points in a day up and down. When, a, when Tesla goes back to a normal market, it might be trading between a range of five and eight dollars up and down. You know, you got the triple Q's, which is an ETF trading 10, 12 points in a day up down sideways up down sideways when the triple q's go back to a normal market you're going to be looking for something like a dollar to a dollar and 50 point move in a day is going to be a fantastic day there's not going to be a lot of movement going on it's going to be very very calm and a bull market is meant for the long-term investor to kind of make money slow and steady 
uh, you know, just gradually over time. When the market starts getting very volatile and gets really crazy like this is when people start to spin their wheels in the mud. So what am I kind of getting at here? What I'm getting at here is based on technical analysis, based on this massive run up here that we've had, stocks are getting reset. They're coming back down into a normal range. What's going to be the what's going to be the new range? What's going to be the new number? I can see the market coming down to 240 in between 240 and 265 somewhere in there on the triple Qs, right? That's going to put us in this zone, okay? Now, anything below this is going to spell a lot more trouble um and would be complete destruction. But if this is going to be an orderly bear market, I can see this dragging out into the end of summer, maybe even fall time, getting you know some bumps along the way here, maybe even a back test, come back down, bumps along the way, but getting ourselves into that you know sort of 240 to 260 range on the queues, and I think it's at that point where you really want to start loading up uh, on solid companies, you know your Apples, your Nvidia's. Um, you know, your ETFs, the SPY, even uh, the triple Qs, um, your Microsofts of the world, your Googles of the world, your Amazons of the world. It's then and then only is when you want to start loading in. You don't just want to start buying here because someone told you it's a generational opportunity of a lifetime to get in here. And then two months later, we're all the way down here. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. Stick to the technicals here. We have a support coming up here on the monthly time frame right around this 270. Let's just call it 270s, right? In the 270s, we have a monthly support. On the weekly time frame, we've got some support in the 280s. So I can see a little bit of a dead cat bounce coming once we get into those 280s, maybe back up into that 300, 315 before it gets rejected again at upper supply and rolls back down. Um, anything below 280s is definitely going to take us into those 270s. And then if the market wants to test its monthly 50 day moving average, we're talking about a price in the 250s on the queues. I definitely think at that point in time, we'll see some sort of reversal. I think most stocks will be down another 20, 30, 40% from current prices. And that hard reset will allow us to come out of this again and get into a bull market, maybe heading into the end of this year, the start, right? So here's, okay, let me finish my statement. The end of this year going into 2023 and 2024. So here's the problem that's going to happen, okay? A lot of traders are going to remember what happened when we bottomed here and when we bottomed here, okay? This was just a massive run-up. So a lot of traders are going to think that we're going to come at down into this range and it's just going to be a massive year run-up to get back to all-time highs and then beyond. Maybe it is and maybe it's not. But if we go back to some sort of orderly market after this, well then, let me move this screen over, it can actually look a little something like this, right? If we come down here, dead cat here, and we start to come up, it can do something like this, a slow rounding bottom, okay? Rounding bottom, and actually, that's not right. A slow rounding bottom. And if you kind of look at down here below, this is 2023, this is 2024, this is 2025, 2026. It can take two, three, four years in a normal orderly market to get back to those all-time highs. Now, is the saying correct that if you just continuously add to your position sizing, you accumulate shares in bear markets, that you're always going to come out ahead? Yes, of course. If this and when it comes out, in 10 years from now, you will probably make money in solid companies. But the problem that a lot of newer traders are going to have is that they're going to expect a COVID reversal. They're going to expect us to quickly bottom out and quickly within a year's time take out all-time highs and then continue on this trajectory going to the moon. That can happen, but if it's an orderly market and an orderly reset, things could round and start to take time, okay? And by time, I mean years to recover. Three, four, five. 10 years to recover and the reco the road to recovery could look something more like this this next time rather than 
a, a recovery like the COVID recovery, okay? Now, this is going to make people very, very anxious and very, very uh, distraught because a lot of companies that they're going to add into down here, right, are going to get restless. A lot of people are going to get extremely restless and they're going to chop themselves up and they're going to not know what to do and they're going to get upset because they're looking for, you know, the big reversal to come in two or three months and it might take two or three years. So, you know, if you're a long-term investor, I would definitely recommend adding into some solid companies that you own. Uh, I would at least wait until the 270s if we get there, 250s if we get there, um, and those would be great spots. Um you know, those would be great, great spots to kind of, you know, add into for a long term investment. Now, you know, if the market decides to just stop here in the middle of no man's land and sort of reverse, well, then you know what, we're going to need to at least get over 336. Okay, which is going to be this level here, before we can think about, hey, you know what, maybe the market did decide, you know, to find a little bit of a home in, in the middle of no man's land here. And then it's going to need to start building off of that. And maybe we can look something like this. But, you know, we just need more data. Uh, but, you know, the only reason why I brought out this big monthly chart here is, you know, I just kind of want to, you know, show you that, you know, if you don't think stocks can go lower, they definitely can. You know, the last couple of times that we had these little short lived, you know, bear market corrections, um, we came down and we tagged the 50 day moving average. So even if we only came down and tagged the 50 day moving average this next time, that's still bringing us to a price point of 255 on the queues. Uh, when we get to 255 on the queues, we can look for some sort of reversal to start bottoming out here and then make some money on this way up, depending on if you're a trader or a longer term investor. But that definitely would be the spot. Um, if you can kind of just look at the monthly candle here. I mean, this isn't this candle is an inverse hammer candle. It's red. It's deep. It's it's in the middle of no man's land. We got to find a, a support. We need to find a bottom. Where's going to be the bottom? I don't think that it's going to be in the middle of supply and demand. I think it's got to at least come down and tag one of these levels um, before we can say that, hey, you know what? We have found the bottom and maybe it's time to start adding. So stay patient. Uh, there's no rush. Um, if you're a long-term investor, there's nothing you guys can really do. But what you need to do is just be patient and just continue to average down on solid names. Now, mind you, I was talking with some of the guys in Discord today. Solid names do not mean companies like FUBU and Wish and Skills and, you know, Clove and, and you know, even stock like SoFi, for example. Now, although some of these companies might recover, they might not. They Some of these companies are trading between $1 and $5. Some of those companies, when we do come out of this, might get left down there. When I'm speaking quality names, I'm talking about your SPY and your triple Q ETF. I'm talking about strong names that are cash flow positive like, you know, Amazon and Apple and NVIDIA and, you know, AMD, which, which is holding up very, very well, actually, as we speak. Um, but strong names, okay? Strong names is what you're going to want to be adding on this dip because those are going to be, you know, the, the safest plays when we do come out of here. And it's also going to give you a little bit of a lower price uh, target to kind of get in on these names. So, you know, sit back, be patient. You guys are involved in a moment in history right now. And, um, you know, just look for some of these lower levels to get tagged. Uh, I'll continue to make these update videos so we can stay in tune with the technical analysis and where we're where we're at here. But if you guys want to subscribe to my YouTube, definitely subscribe to the YouTube as well as join the Discord. I will see you guys all in the next um, video.